Are you thinking about moving to Torrance, California? Well, before you make that move, you're going to want to watch this video because I'm going to share with you seven big reasons why you might want to avoid moving here. And number seven is one not enough people are talking about, so definitely make sure you stay on till the end. Now, in case you're new here, I'm Shira Adato, your local Los Angeles area realtor, and I want to welcome you to South Bay Living YouTube channel, the go-to real estate channel for everything you need to know about living in the South Bay of Los Angeles. I have people reaching out to me all the time who are thinking of moving here, and I absolutely love it, and I would love to hear from you too. So if you're thinking about moving here and you need some honest advice about how to choose the best areas for you and your family, I'm happy to be a resource for you. Feel free to reach out to me here, contact info, or maybe you're not quite ready to hop on the phone, but you're still in the research phase. There is a link in the description of this video where you can download my free relocation guide so you can get some exclusive insider information about how to effectively relocate here. So this is going to be a real raw talk about all the downsides of living in Torrance because I do like to keep it real. And as much as I enjoy so many of the incredible lifestyle benefits of living in the South Bay, there are things that are important to know so you can make an informed decision about moving here. I've lived in this area for over 20 years. I've raised two kids here. So this is coming from real personal experience. Now, in case you're not familiar, Torrance is a city in Los Angeles County with a population of around 144,000. It's located in the area known as the South Bay, south of LAX airport, with some of its neighboring cities being Redondo Beach, Lawndale, Carson, and Palos Verdes. The city is quite large and actually has four different zip codes. So some of what I say might not apply to all areas, but just know I'm speaking in overall general terms about Torrance. So number one on the list of drawbacks would be the lack of walkability. wide streets, busy intersections that can make walking a bit challenging. There are also not very many dedicated bike lanes or paths, which can make cycling a bit challenging. And while there are plenty of parks and shopping areas that are within walking distance of some residential areas, they're often quite spread out and not connected by walkable, friendly routes. And while Torrance does have some walkable areas, you definitely need a car to get around. I'd say the biggest exception to this is the area of Torrance known as Old Torrance, which is actually the original boundaries of historical Torrance when the city was established in 1912. It's actually a really charming little neighborhood centered around a downtown area with lots of open green space, bakeries, coffee shops, antique stores. And I did a full video on Old Torrance, so if you're looking for a neighborhood with that historic charm and walkability, definitely go check that out. Now, number two is going to be air quality. Air quality in Torrance has been a concern in recent years because of the presence of industrial facilities in the area. The, the city's home to several oil refineries and chemical plants, which can release pollutants into the air. And this has caused Torrance to experience higher levels of pollutants than some other cities in the area. I'd say it affects some areas more than others. In fact, the areas closer to the beach are known for having better air quality than Los Angeles, for example. The good news is this is an issue that is being addressed. Efforts are being made to improve air quality in the area. The South Coast Air Quality Management District has implemented regulations and monitoring programs to reduce emissions from the industrial facilities. Number three on the list of downsides is traffic. LA is notorious for bad traffic and everyone knows about traffic on the freeways, but you also need to be worried about traffic within the city itself. There are a ton of traffic lights and traffic can be really congested on major roads like Hawthorne Boulevard, Boulevard, Pacific Coast Highway, and Torrance Boulevard. And while I generally say there's no such thing as rush hour in LA because there could be bumper to bumper traffic at any time, during typical rush hour times, the areas around the entrance to the 405 and the 110 freeways can be pretty brutal. So yes, there is freeway traffic, but even if you're driving like three miles away, you could run into traffic. Okay, let's move on to weather. While most people view the weather in Southern California as one of the top benefits of living here, and for the most part, I do too. I mean, average temperatures in the 70s and comfortable year round, 
I want to highlight some of the negatives of the weather here because it does factor into quality of life heavily and I want you to be able to weigh your decision about living here. So this is the real truth about the weather. And while the weather is beautiful, we do not have seasons here. I mean, yeah, winter is cooler, we get some rain, but you will not experience a true fall or winter here. We Californians like to wear our Ugg boots in the winter as if it's actually cold, but if someone were to come here from out of state and see what we call cold, they'd probably laugh at us. I grew up in upstate New York. I know cold, I know snow. What we have here in California is not true cold. Even on those rare days, it gets down in the 50s. The other thing to point out about the weather is this phenomenon we have in the spring and summer called May Gray or June Gloom. Most days of the month, when you wake up, it will be gloomy and gray and even a little chilly in those months. It's like this marine layer fog sort of thing that happens. But the good news is most of the time it does burn off by around noon or 1 p.m. So we get those sunny afternoons. But it can be kind of annoying that the rest of the world is celebrating the start of spring and sunny and wearing shorts. And we have this kind of gray, gloomy thing going on for part of the day. Now, while we're on the topic of Mother Nature, let's talk about earthquakes. Of course, every area comes with its own risk of natural disasters, but earthquakes are obviously a known issue in California. Having lived in the South Bay for over 22 years now, I've definitely experienced my share of even bigger earthquakes, but no big one that ended up in catas catastrophe, like not yet. You definitely feel them. They are scary. Some of them can feel like a big jolt, like a train hitting your house, like a boom. And some feel more like the whole house is swaying and rolling and kind of a rumbling feeling. Those can often feel like they're going on forever, even though it's usually only a few seconds. The other thing to know about earthquakes is that it's hard to insure your home against them. There is earthquake insurance, but it's expensive and the deductibles are extremely high. So I know many people who opt not to pay for it. Next on the list is a big one, and that is cost of living. When choosing a new place to live, the cost of living is a significant consideration, and the cost of living in Torrance is higher than the national average in even most cities in the state. Now, there are definitely places in the LA area that cost a lot more than Torrance, including its neighbors, the beach cities and Palos Verdes. So on a relative scale, you can actually get a lot more for your money, but definitely expect to pay upwards of a million dollars for a modest single family home with a small yard. With that said, Torrance is pretty diverse when it comes to housing. There are neighborhoods like North Torrance and Southeast Torrance where you can get more house for your money. And there are some great condo or townhouse communities that can make things more affordable. But overall, the average of housing costs, utilities, groceries, transportation, healthcare, and miscellaneous goods and services tends to be more expensive than the national average. But that's pretty typical of anywhere in LA. The good news is Torrance is known for having highly rated public schools, much better than most of the LA USD schools. So living here will likely save you on having to splurge on private school. Now, last but not least, I would say, in my opinion, Torrance lacks a sense of character charm. It has a very mid-century sort of bland suburban look, not a lot of architectural character, and it just lacks that style that you think of when you think of other California cities like San Francisco or Santa Barbara. It has a lot of strip malls, but no real quaint downtown area, again, with the exception of Old Torrance. Old Torrance has a lot of historic charm, beautiful tree-lined streets, old craftsmen and Spanish-style bungalows built in the early 1900s, and a really charming, albeit somewhat sleepy, downtown area. Now, if these things don't deter you and you are still thinking about moving to Torrance and want an exclusive list of preferred properties, email me at homesbyshira at gmail.com with Torrance in the subject line and I will get that over to you. I work with buyers and sellers in this area and the surrounding South Bay neighborhoods all the time. So if you're even a little bit interested in moving to Torrance or the nearby areas and you need help figuring out which areas would be best, for your personal situation, I'm always happy to be a resource. You can call or text me at this number on the screen. There's so much happening in the market right now and things are constantly changing. So if you definitely want a trusted resource, it would be my honor to help you. So with that, 
Bye for now, and I'll see you on the next one.